tell you again. Out now, the pair of you! I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. Mum, what? I didn't think even you could stoop so low. And don't give me the innocent look, because I've heard every single word. Tyrone, tell them about your radio. Oh, what, that it's broken? Broken how? Well, for one, everyone can hear what I'm saying even when I don't want them to. Could you uh, look after the switch, please? Your own little radio show, Radio Sordid. 86 FM. You home now. Eileen. I'll uh... deal with you later. No, Mum, you can't order me home like I'm a five year old. I am, and I can. Home! Eileen, wait. I. Ow! I wonder what that was about. Who cares? You know all this stuff with Gemma? You can't go around banning people from Kylie's funeral. Says who? Kylie would want her there. No, she wouldn't. Even Kylie realised that all that lot were best avoided. Yeah, I know, but... Look, I'm organising Kylie's funeral, yeah? So I'm giving her a proper send-off, which means no drug dealers or skanks there, and that's final. You shouldn't be listening to other people's conversations. Well, you shouldn't be broadcasting it, then, should you? How are we supposed to know that Tyrone's radio was broken? Oh, well, you could have kept your tawdry little secret under wraps if you had, like you probably have done for months. There's nothing tawdry about it. Right, and excuse me, it's not been months. So, how long? Eileen... I'm it... talking to him. I've said enough to you already. Look, we, we were going to tell Sean, weren't oh, we? Oh, oh, that's OK. As long as you were going to tell him, everything's fine. I didn't set out to I hurt think anyone. you should go. I'll, I'll be in the Rovers. Eileen, I'm sorry. We didn't mean for it to happen like this. I thought Leanne might have been a bit excited when I told her. Mm. Richly spiced with notes of fruit and vanilla. Instead, I get a hundred reasons why having a baby is such a bad idea. I remember the good old days when people just used to talk rubbish about wine. And after everything I did for her at the hospital, she could have at least been happy for us, don't you think? We're going to taste this or what? I mean, who is she, anyway? Who is she to be so negative about us having a baby? I was like that soap we used to get at school. Carbolic. That's the one. Mmm. Tastes like it and all. Oh. Sounds bad. Oh, do you want to try some of this? Apparently it's the next big thing, according to the rep. Michelle looks distinctly underwhelmed. How come nobody's ever just the right amount of whelmed? They're either overwhelmed or underwhelmed, aren't they? Never just like, you know, whelmed. Uh, I'll, I'll just have a, a, a pint of the usual, please. Shall I contact you? You're all right, thanks. Oh, hi, Michelle. Any chance of a quick word? Of course, yeah. It's Marcus all over again. You see people happy and you can't stand it. No, it's not like that. So how was it then? Champagne, flowers, poetry? Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, Brokeback Mountain meets Romeo and Juliet round here for months. Months? Mum, I don't feel good about this, all right? Well, I suppose that's something, at least. We, we can't help how we feel about each other. Oh, well, forgive me if I can't see you and Billy living happily ever after with an allotment at a chocolate Labrador. Mum, right, I've said I'm sorry, we both have. Why couldn't you wait until he started sneaking around? Yeah, like uh, you did, after you and Michael split. That was different. Yeah? How? It just was. Where are you going? See, Billy. You see, I'm not sure I can stand the smell of hypocrisy round here. Oh, and uh, I'll pack me bags later, if that's what you want. It's fine, Leanne. No, it is not fine at all. <sighs> Talk about negative. Well, I must admit, I was hoping for a more upbeat response. Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle, I really am. I'm just a bit wrapped up in myself at the moment. That's understandable, I suppose. No, it's not an excuse. You were really brilliant at the hospital and, well, least I could do is be pleased for you. Let's just forget it, eh? Sorry to interrupt. I just wondered how long you'd be. I've got to change a barrel and there's no one behind the bar. Do you know, I don't get a minute's peace with this one. Might as well have fitted me with a tracking device. Yeah. You're playing out. I'm talking to Michelle. About what? You know, I don't know what's going through your head, Steve, but you're really not helping. When I said be good to her, I didn't mean starving kids with her and all. Look, she really wants this baby. I want her to be happy. I'm sorry. All right. Well, then maybe we could just start a commune or whatever they call it. Or grow vegetables and live happily ever after. No, I didn't think so either. We need to start thinking about getting you back to hospital soon. Yeah, there's plenty of time for that. I do think... 
We do need to sit down, though, and just have a talk before I go. I'm going to start bringing up all this Gemma stuff again, are you? Well, not just that. I, I just think we need to maybe talk about how we're feeling. What is it with you lot and talking like it's some sort of magic cure for everything? Give it a rest, both of you. All right, mate. What have you been up to? Nothing. Yeah, well, I've got a job for you, actually. It's quite important, really. Um, do you remember we were talking about putting together a music playlist of your mum's favourite songs? Yeah. Yeah, well, I need you to pick one for the funeral. That's easy. Pussycat dolls. Oh, I don't think that's appropriate, though. Why not? It was a favourite. Yeah, but it's just not as simple as that. Says who? Oh, you're surely not suggesting we have a song like that at a funeral. Well, why not? I mean, a funeral's meant to go a certain way. Is there a rule book? Gail's Guide? You silly, David. Kylie didn't exactly spend her time thinking about what was appropriate, did she? No, I don't suppose she did. No. So, Max, is there anything else you think your mum would like? Just stuff that will make people think of her. Hey, I see. Spot on. <sighs> what are you watching? Oh, uh... Just the film. Notting Hill. Didn't have you down as a rom-com kind of guy. Hey, I just turned the channel and it was on. Likely story. Stick into it. <laughs> Thanks for coming round. Your text was a nice surprise. What's up? I've been thinking. Always dangerous. <laughs> and I just... Look at you. All bashful. You're dead cute when you're nervous. Well, I just wanted you to know that I'm really sorry I can't give you what you want. You are absolutely amazing, and there'll be a queue of guys lining up to ask you out. I know that. I just wish it could be different, that I could be different, but I can't. <sighs> Maybe it should be me that's saying sorry. I should be respecting of your beliefs, not try to pressurise you into doing something you don't want to. It's not that I don't want I've to. I've met so many guys that are only after one thing. And you're not like that. You're different. I should be glad about that. Are you saying you want to give it another go? <laughs> it, it, if that's what you're saying. Honey, I'm home. Welcome back. How's the journey? Oh, don't ask. The bloke opposite me on the train was like one of them trolls out of Lord of the Rings. Every time I looked up, he was cramming another pork pie into his gob. Then he fell asleep and started drooling all down his front. It was disgusting. Well, at least you're back, eh? I am indeed. <laughs> Although I'm dreading seeing you know who. How's Dylan? He's fine, yeah. Took loads of photos. I'll show him you later. Is Todd around? No. Why? Because I've got presents. Wait till you see this. This is for you. Ta-da! How kitsch is that? Fantastic. <laughs> and then these are for... Todd! Sean. Oh, what? He'll love them. Oh, I'm sure he will. Anyway, I can't stand here gabbing. I've got to start my shift in five minutes. Are the Rovers? Well, I'm hardly going to put a night shift in at the factory, am I? Yeah, you've only just got back. Yeah, I know. I've got a week's worth of sightseeing to pay for. Well, surely you've got time to have a quick couple with me before you head off. Not really. Well, I'm dying to see the photos. You can have a quick brew with me. Go on, Steve and Michelle, they'll understand for you a few minutes late. What about food? What about it? Can we have burgers and chips from the kebab shop? <laughs> Why not? And loads of sweets. Well, I suppose if your dad said yes, then who am I to argue? Right, burgers and chips it is. I mean, it's your day, Max, for remembering your mum, so if that's what you want, that's what we'll have. Have you, um... Have you thought about a eulogy? Not yet, no. What's a eulogy? It's when someone stands up and says nice things about the person that died. Can I do it? I'm not sure that's a good idea, Max. Why not? Well, you'd be nervous, wouldn't you? Standing up in front of all those people. Yeah, especially on such an important day. I don't care. I want to do one. Honestly, Max, I, I don't think it's the job for you. When Callum died, my mum said funerals are your last chance to say goodbye to people. That's true. So why can't I do one of those eulogy things? Right, come on, mate. We'll 
We'll go upstairs, we'll talk about it. Oh, I can't go back there. What? To hospital, I'm not going. I'm going to stay here. David needs me. You're not ready to come home full time, Sarah. made my decision. My family said that they'll support me. Absolutely, yeah, I'll be, I'll be in tomorrow. Well, no, no, because I won't change my mind. Right, OK, bye. What did they say? Oh, well, they're not happy about it, but I said I'll go and get some more medication tomorrow. Are you sure you want to risk undoing all your good work? I'm not undoing anything. I think you should stay there until you're 100% sure you're OK. But then I'm going to be there worried about David, so how is that going to help? You've been getting so much better, though. Exactly, which is why I'm fine to come home now. Don't do this, Mum. Honestly, it's for the best. How can it be? They want you to go back. Yeah, you should listen to your daughter. She's talking sense. I know that you're worried about me, but I, you need to trust me on this. The people at the hospital are trained professionals. You should take their advice. This family needs to stick together. David, Kylie, they, they've always been there for me and it's my turn. Look, I'm not going anywhere and I don't want another word said about it. Todd, look who's back. Sean, hi. Welcome back. How was it? Yeah, it was, it was really good, thanks. <clears throat> Dylan was asking all about you, but I made an excuse. How was he? Yeah, he's fine, thanks. Anyway, I can't stay chatting. Some of us have got work to do, unlike you two gentlemen of leisure. <laughs> Just popped in for a quick one after work. Yeah, same. Right. Well, I've got a present for you, so I'll give it to you later. Sean, you shouldn't have. You know me, generous to a fault. Ah, oh, the wanderer returns. He does indeed, and talk about commitment. I only got off the train an hour ago. Oh, why are you late, then? I'm just joking. Your dedication is appreciated. Appreciation is lovely. A pay rise would be nicer. Yeah, we'll get back to you on that one. After we get back from a little trip of our own, I've booked us on the overnight ferry to Ireland. What? Visit me mum and dad a few days away. How come? Well, just thought it'd do us good, you know. A bit of walking and uh, a few other physical pursuits. Oh, don't look too enthusiastic, will oh, you? No, I mean... no, 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 sorry, sorry. No, listen, it will be brilliant. OK, well, you best start packing, then. I know how long it takes you to throw a few pairs of undies in a suitcase. Mm-hmm. Are you uh, sure we're all right? Yeah, of course. Cleared it with your mum. Go on, then. Get a move on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just got off the phone with Becky. She can't make it on Monday. Why? She's got a middle ear infection. They won't let her fly? No. Oh, David, I'm so sorry. Well, it's Becky I feel sorry for. I mean, she sounded gutted on the phone, but what can she do? Your sister's got some news. Yeah, I'm not going back to the hospital. How come? She says she wants to be here. All right, well, as long as you're sure. Last thing I need is you flipping out on me again. David, your sister's just made a huge sacrifice for you. And the least you can do is show a bit of gratitude. Yeah, I just feel like I really owe it to Kylie and you. Bethany, I just want you to get better. What's Max doing? He's uh, writing his eulogy. So I just said I'd, I'd leave him to it, you know? I'm, I'm going to nip out, actually, and get some fresh air. Do you want me to come with you? No, you're all right. I just need some time on my own. Cheers. Uh, before you go, and promise not to bite me head off, but all this business about banning Gemma from the funeral. Oh, Mo, I don't want to talk about I, it. I know you want everything to be perfect, but you can't just whitewash the past. I'm not trying to whitewash anything. And you did say that the funeral was to be all the things that Kylie wanted. And Gemma was part of Kylie's past, whether you like it or not. Well, she's the reason Kylie's dead. I mean, those lives wouldn't have been hanging around the kebab shop, would they, if it wasn't for her? <sighs> yeah, but would Kylie be blaming Gemma for it, though? Can't you just tell her that she can come if she keeps the rest of them away? I know that you two sat here flaunting it. We're not flaunting anything. How are we supposed to know he was coming straight into work? Well, this sneaking around needs to stop now. 
I'm gonna go out with him. I'll see you tomorrow. No, 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 no. Wait. I'll see you tomorrow. You need to sort this mess out before somebody gets seriously hurt. Where are you going? You've only just got here. I've um, changed my mind, fancy a night in front of the telly. We're all right for some. Oh, and I'll look at the rest of your photos tomorrow. Right, see ya. And another. Have you been upsetting your mother again? Just can't seem to get anything right at the moment. Well, I'm always here. If you need a shoulder to cry on, you know that. I don't even know why I like you so much. Charming. I mean, you're arrogant and stubborn and... Clever, gorgeous, brilliant in the kitchen. Oh, you carry on. Don't let me stop you. That's it for now. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, we, we weren't doing anything. I'm well aware of that. Relax. I was, um, I was about to leave anyway. You don't have to go on my account. But honestly, I've, I've got loads of stuff to do, so, um, I'll see you later, yeah? You certainly will. Andy, can we assume the path of true love is running smooth again? <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as true love, and it's a bit early for Smoothly. Seems pretty smooth to me. For now. But you've stuck to your principles. Yeah, of course. I admire you for that. After all, if you don't have your integrity, then what do you have? Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. Just feels wrong, doesn't it? A kebab without ten pints first. Yeah, but you're doing it anyway. Yeah, well, I like to keep an open mind about these things. That and I can't afford the ten pints, so this I'll have to do. <laughs> See you later, Dave. See ya. If you want a kebab, I'll get you one, but I don't want any asshole. I'm not here for asshole or a kebab. What, then? A word. I heard you before. I'm not welcome at the funeral. Message received. You can come if you want. How come? Because you were Kylie's mate. Whether I like it or not. Nice one. Cheers. Just want you to do me a favour, though. Depends what it is. You have to promise to keep Macca and his little gang well away. How am I going to do that? Use your charm. I've just grassed up Clayton to the coppers. I'm hardly Mrs. Popular on the estate. Look, I, I don't care how you do it. Just do it. Right? See you Monday. I should have said something. You were right, before it all got out of hand. Yeah, you should. I keep thinking about it, about her. Well, don't. I'm really sorry. David, I mean that. You sure you don't want a kebab on the house? No, you just promised to keep that lot well away from the funeral on Monday, right? I'll try my best. Away the you watch him? Very mature. You want to talk to me about maturity? Mum. Yeah, you are like a puppy in the park, Todd. You can't decide which board you want, so you go after all of them. When are you going to learn? What if I have learned? Hmm? What if I realise that Billy's the one and I won't let anything stop us being together? You really believe that? All I know is I've never felt like this before about anyone, and I really want to make it work. Even if it means breaking Sean's heart? Well, it's already broken, isn't it? Well, it's going to get a lot worse when he finds out that you've done the dirty on him. You're practically his family. You think I haven't thought about that? I didn't want this to happen, I swear to you. And what's he going to think when he finds out that I knew and said nothing? How's that going to look? I'm sorry, I... What do you want me to say? The best thing you can do is tell Sean the truth, and as soon as possible. We are, we are. We're just gonna wait till the funeral's over. We well, better. Because if you don't, I will. Look, Todd, you're my son, and if you're serious about Billy, then I'm gonna support you. You really mean that? Well, of course I do. But you need to be completely honest with yourself and Sean. Hey, how did it go? Yeah, she said she'll come on Monday. Well, that's something, I suppose. 
can't believe I'm asking her to come anywhere. He did the right thing. Have I? Yeah, of course you have. Well, I've done the right thing when those murderers are six feet under. David, don't talk like that. Well, it's the truth. And you know what? I'll laugh. As soon as they lower those coffins into the ground, I'll be somewhere else and I'll be savouring every minute. Is that somewhere else going to be prison? Are you still going to be laughing then? You promised Kylie that you would look after Max and Lily. Yeah, and I also promised her that I'd get revenge. You were them two things. They don't go together. Can you not see that? Look, I I'm not talking about this, Sarah. David, look, you need to focus on the kids. Th that's what Kylie would have really wanted. Forget about revenge. And what if I can't? What if I can't let them carry on with their lives? Because my wife's dead and Max and Lily haven't got a mother anymore. I know that it, it must be hard, David. How? How do you know how hard it is, Sarah? To lie awake every night for hours and when you finally do get some sleep, you wake up and for a few seconds you can't understand why you feel so sick in your stomach because for those few seconds, you forget she's gone. She's gone, she, she's gone forever and it's all their fault. I don't know. I'm sorry. I just, I just, um... They have to pay, Sarah. Just really, just look after Max and Lily. That is all you can do. Yeah, I know. Oh, come here, yeah. come here. Next, Louisa and the GP get some surprise homework in their first therapy session in Doc Martin. Over on ITV2 next tonight, we've the fourth film in the wheel-spinning series. It's Fast and Furious. And with more movies worth staying in for this summer, Sunday at 8, Daniel Craig is Bond in Skyfall. <laughs>